there, this is Jeremy Ryden, the host of Raising Rainbow, the channel that's 100% committed to encouraging, uplifting, and empowering the LGBTQI plus community. And we have a phenomenal episode. This is kind of a little mini series, and I'm with Pastor Salvatore Sapienza. You got it. <laughs> I stuttered there a little bit, but <laughs> he is a pastor here in Douglas, Michigan for the United Church of Christ. I met him a few years ago uh, when I went to an interfaith retreat where he was speaking. And uh, a lot of people may not realize this, but didn't you attend one of the first interfaith community colleges? Or how? Tell us a little bit about that real quick. Yes, thanks, Jeremy. Yes, I, I am a, a pastor in the Christian church, but I'm also an ordained interfaith minister. Uh, and I graduated from uh, the oldest interfaith seminary in the United States. Look, he graduated from the oldest where you need to be on here selling a makeup kit or something. He does not look like he graduated from the oldest interfaith. Oh, you are so kind. But no, the seminary was founded uh, over 30 years ago by a rabbi in New York City. Uh, he's now since passed away. His name was Rabbi Joseph Gelberman. But he felt that clergy should not only study their own faith tradition, but that they should study all of the world's major faith traditions. And so the seminary, uh, I didn't just learn about Christianity. I learned about Hinduism and Buddhism and, and Islam and Native American spirituality. And our professors were people of those traditions. Uh, and we read their holy books. And we were even encouraged uh, during the months we were studying a certain tradition to visit their houses of worship and to even pray uh, at, during our personal prayer time in that tradition. So I'm so grateful that I had that seminary experience because it really helped expand my thinking about spirituality, uh, who God is, and, and what our purpose for being is. I absolutely love it. And if you did not watch the last episode, the first episode we had with Pastor Sal, you absolutely want to watch it. I I told them in the first uh, episode, don't turn the channel off just because you see a Christian pastor here. Uh, Raising Rainbow is about having our connection with our higher self, our higher power. You may call it, as Pastor Sal said, from many different traditions, but we're here to encourage you to remove the roadblocks that may hinder you from feeling like you have a spiritual side. And Pastor Sal also wrote a phenomenal book called Gay is a Gift. And you can actually find more out about this book or find out all about his phenomenal teachings at gayisagift.com. And you want to follow him on Facebook. I consider you, Pastor Salvatore, to be a 21st century spiritual leader. Uh, I said in the last episode, I didn't want anything to do with Christian people after many years being a Christian minister myself. Uh, but your understanding, I like how he said it, the enlightenment, the higher understanding of spirituality really resonated with me to continue on my own spiritual journey. And so Raising Rainbow is about helping you connect to the spiritual side. Pastor Sal, many people talk about in the Christian faith that they need to be saved or they're lost or dying and going to hell. And, and so redemption is something that's tricky because usually from the Christian far right churches, they're using redemption as a, something to beat you up for being gay or beat you up for, you know, not living, you know, according to their denomination. Um, I personally still feel for all those that are watching that, you know, I don't believe you're going to hell, but I do believe that for me, not for anyone else, but for me, there was still a sense of, I don't believe gay is wrong, but I still feel like I want to connect to God. I want to feel like there's something out there that I need to connect to. And so my question for you is, from where your your perspective from Christianity or just your own spiritual walk, what is that need for redemption? And how do I remove roadblocks from connecting to that, to what you call God, Jesus, the mm -hmm. Spirit? Uh, it's such a great question, Jeremy. And I think it's a key question. You know, I get it. Look, I understand why if you're a member of the LGBTQ community, you have walked away from the church. I get it. The church is is the place that did a lot of damage uh, and told you a lot of lies. So I can understand why watching this video and seeing me in a collar as a Christian pastor uh, might make you turn away. Uh, I think, unfortunately, for a lot of people in the LGBTQ community who grew up uh, as Christian, once they came out, 
they kind of uh, threw the church away. Uh, they thought, well, this church told me that I was bad and broken in need of fixing, uh, and I'm done with the church. And again, I get it. But I think in many ways, uh, we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater. We, we've walked away from the church, but then we've also walked away from, from our spiritual life, which is so much a part of who we are. And so I'm not saying that you need to be a Christian, but what I am saying is spirituality is so much a part of our purpose for being, and, and we need to find ways to, to connect with the divine. My path is Christianity, but there are so many paths. So yes, let's get to that question. You know, the, the Christian church says that people need to be saved. And I'm here to tell you that people do not need saving. You do not need to be saved because you already are saved. And here's why. We hear in scripture that God is love and that God's love for us is unconditional, which means it's not based on any conditions. God loves you 100% exactly as you are right now. You don't have to do anything to earn God's favor or to win God's love because you already have it. It's been given to you. You already have it. Um, and, and I think that's what people should be hearing in church. And sadly, people come to church and they hear, you're bad, you're broken, you need to be fixed, you're a sinner. And instead, what I think people need to be hearing at church is, you are a beloved child of God. Or as Jesus said, you're the light of the world. He said, the kingdom is within you. And, and one of the lines that I use a lot that Jesus said was, he said, all of the things that I've done, you can do. And then he added, these things and greater. Mm. He was telling us we could do even greater things than he did once we knew our oneness with God, the truth of our divinity. So that's what churches should be telling people is that you are wonderfully made in the very image and likeness of God. You're the light of the world. Um, and, uh, and God loves you unconditionally. And uh, unfortunately, we have been, it's not our fault, we were brought up in a church that told us the opposite. Uh, and I think a lot of that, Jeremy, is that the church likes to keep people in fear uh, because the church wants to control people. Uh, unfortunately, that is the truth, that if, if I say to you, you need us because uh, you're gonna go to hell unless, unless you have us, um, it keeps people in fear. God does not want you to be afraid. And that's one of the biggest stumbling blocks, I think, Jeremy. If you're afraid of God, if you think God's keeping track of your mistakes and, and, and when you die, God's going to punish you, then you're never going to get close to God. You're never going to become one with the one and experience uh, that presence of the divine, that presence of love, because you're afraid of it and you can't you can't love what you fear. Hmm. Um, so, you know, A Course in Miracles says that there are only two emotions, fear and love. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, you can't love what you're afraid of. So if you're afraid of God, you know, you can't love God. You know, in the Bible, when it talks about fear of the Lord or fear of God, it doesn't mean fear in terms of being afraid of something. It means fear and like being being in awe, you know, mm. like when you're just you're so in oh. awe, you're so in awe of something, the awesomeness of it. I mean, it, it can bring up feelings of of fright, but it, it it's in because you're experiencing such love and bliss and joy that you've never experienced mm. before. That you're you're in awe of the awe, you know, and that's that's what it is. I gotta stop because yeah. that's too. I gotta do like Oprah Winfrey. Aha! <laughs> I gotta stop. Do you got? Did you hear just what he said? <laughs> The fear in God was not about being afraid of God. It was about being in awe of the wonder yes. of spirit. It's yes. just like maybe, you know, I remember when I was a, a cruise director and this is when I was having a hard time with my faith. And we went out to Alaska on the ship and we got to an area that can only be, you couldn't get there, but either by air or ship. But it, we saw these glaciers and we also saw this nature and animal and it was the most breath taking scene that out of my mouth, I just said, oh my God. And it was so beautiful and it was a wonder. 
And I think that religion that uses control and fear makes you feel separate from God. But a religion like Native America that has an a, 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 almost a curiosity, a wonder, an appreciation, one of gratitude, a religion of gratitude brings you closer to God. And what I'm hearing from you is, is you said earlier, Pat, and correct me if I'm wrong, is Jesus was teaching that we're one with God, that God is one. Does that mean that for those that are watching, that even if they maybe they've never been to church in years or they're not even religious, that that doesn't mean they're separated from the, separate from the creator, like, you know, on my sins separate me from God. It, are you saying that even if I'm not feeling God right now, that force is with me? Absolutely. Yes, you can, you can never be separated from God. You can't. Um, the only thing lacking maybe is your sense of separation. And those experiences like being in nature, like you had in Alaska or the Native Americans, as you said, you know, their spirituality is, is nature based. They see God in, in the trees and in the river and, and in the stars. And, and I think when we connect in those ways, when we look up at the sky, the stars, or we see a beautiful sunset, we are in awe. We feel that connection with all that is, you know, that we become one with the one, with the allness of life. That's what I think Jesus and the spiritual teachers were trying to get across. It wasn't about God being an old man up in the clouds. It was God is love, and we are feeling that love, that presence, that oneness. Um, and so that's why nature is such a wonderful way for us to connect. Gratitude is such a wonderful way for us to connect and, uh, and to remember our oneness because we aren't separate, but we forget, we, we think we are. And thankfully we have the spiritual teachers like Jesus uh, and others who came to say, no, you and you and God are not two; you're one. Hmm. Yeah. I uh, about a month ago, when I asked Pastor Salvatore uh, to do these episodes with me for Raising Rainbow, uh, and I was getting a counseling session from him, I was talking about redemption, and I think this is a great place to put it in. Mm -hmm. As far as maybe I don't feel one with God, I don't feel God's love. Can you kind of? summarize that's where the role of redemption in your mm -hmm. about removing these things our own way of being you know it isn't that you, that god isn't loving you mm -hmm. it's something within ourselves that's withholding us from feeling god's love and and i that's just me paraphrasing pastor salvatore but can you tell us how if someone's out there right now and they're saying i don't feel loved by god how can they begin to make steps to try to connect to that love Oh, great, great point. You know, uh, we hear about Satan, right? And we think of the red guy with horns and a pitchfork. But actually, the, the Hebrew word Satan means stumbling block. Mm. It's what's ever getting in the way of our experiencing our, our oneness with God. You know, so in scripture, you know, Jesus wrestles with the devil. And again, he wasn't wrestling with some red guy with horns. He was wrestling with that sense of, uh, of the stumbling blocks that get in the way of, of living our purpose and, 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 and um, getting in touch with our divine nature. Um, so before Jesus could begin his ministry, he had to wrestle with that and come to terms with the fact that, that he and God were one. And so that's my question, I guess, for all of you is, you know, what, what are the things that are getting in the way? Maybe you still have feelings of unworthiness that, that, that you were taught in your churches or by your family that said there's something wrong with you that needs to be fixed. You know, that's a stumbling block. That's that log in the eye that, you know, we've got to get rid of. Um, um, so, so, you know, we hear it that, again, that word redemption, but also the word atonement. Yes. And I often say to the people in my church, if you take apart the word atonement, it says at one mint. Mm. At one mint is really what we're trying to, to get is we're trying to get that sense of oneness with God that, again, we are not two, we're one. Um, so what are the things that are getting in the way of our 
experiencing that oneness. And a lot of it, again, is, is our sense of unworthiness. If we've been taught that we're not worthy, then we, we tend to believe it. But the truth of the matter is, you are worthy. And it's about knowing your worth. And that's what people should be hearing at church. Um, instead of hearing that uh, they're not worthy and that they need to somehow uh, uh, be fixed because God, God loves you. You're one with God. You are worthy. Uh, and again, you don't need to be saved. If there's any fixing that needs to be done, it's just you uh, reminding yourself of your divine magnificence. That yeah. right there is a step towards connecting to the divine in you mm. is removing the roadblocks that you're listening to. You know, I'm not worthy. I'm not loved. I'm dirty. Remove that right now. Higher consciousness, raising rainbow says you're not only you're, you're, be, you're more than worthy. And the moment you begin to love yourself is when you will begin to connect to that higher love as well. And, uh, you know, I, I just love some, you know, my boyfriend, he always says when God looks at us, all he sees is love because God is love. He sees nothing but love. That's the only lens he can see through. And so you're loved here at Raising Rainbow. Once again, gay is a gift. It really is a gift. And I would like you to go to gayisagift.com so you can get this book. Other books that have been written by Pastor Salvatore Sapienza. And then also to check him out on social media. He's on Facebook. Do some likes. Share these videos. Maybe you're an ally. Share this with your nieces and your nephews. Maybe you got a family member, a niece or a nephew, and they got really religious parents. You know what? You can be an agent of love and send them this video. Send them this video. You know, I've been getting just reports from teenagers that watch these episodes saying, I felt so all alone. I felt, you know, so ostracized. And these videos, these episodes, Raising Rainbow has made me realize I'm not alone and that I am a wonderful being. And so I want to remind you, you're not alone. There's wonderful people like Pastor Salvatore. I would absolutely tell you once again, go to gayisagift.com. Look him up. Listen to his sermons on Sunday. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian, a Hindu. It doesn't really matter because what you're going to hear in every message is that, that essence of God, that essence of love. And we need to hear it. Why? Because we forget it because of all the other voices out there that are kind of, you know, not loving. And so when someone begins to say, you're this and you're that, just realize it's not coming from God. It's coming from a place of lack, lack of understanding, lack of, lack of love. And so um, we're going to do one more episode while I have him here. So you want to watch next week. We're going to do one more episode. And I'm really excited. And any closing words, Pastor Salvatore? No, just the, the, the main thing to take away from, I think, this, this video is that you are whole, which means you are holy, you are worthy, and you are loved.